All right, let's just get right into this, guys. Uh, this is my first, I think my first official film camera review. I shoot film probably 50% of the time. Like I've got just drawers and drawers full of uh, film cameras and film back there. It's just that top drawer and maybe one of the other ones down there that's got a couple of digital cameras in it, but that's like my digital camera drawer right there. And then everything else here is film. So we got a big catalog to get through one day. But today we're looking at this Minolta X700 with the Minolta Motor Drive 1 and a Minolta MD 50 millimeter F1.4 prime lens. I bought this camera, this entire setup, at a local flea market, the Cloverdale flea market for 100 Canadian dollars. This camera looks brand new. Like I am shocked at the condition of this camera. It is nearly perfect. Uh, it's got, even got the, uh, the little quality control sticker that Japanese cameras were so famous for because they had a bit of an issue with people and perceived quality of Japanese products, which nowadays is insane because everybody knows that stuff made in Japan is probably the best stuff you can buy. Uh, I shot two rolls of film with it. I shot a roll of uh, Fujifilm Pro 400H color negative film, and I shot a roll of Japan Camera Hunter Street Pan 400 black and white film. And I shot the first roll, the color film, with the winder on, and I shot the street pan uh, with the winder removed, uh, which I'll take it off in a minute, but I just want to talk about this winder quickly. At the time this camera was launched, this winder cost as much as the camera. So if you wanted this winder, it doubled the price. Hang on. Uh, it's got three modes, the winder, so we're just going to talk about that quickly, and then I'm going to take it off. Uh, it's got three modes. It's got... A selector dial on the top here. It's got single shot, uh, continuous high and continuous low. Single shot sounds like this. Compose your shot, push the shutter on the grip. Sounds, uh, sounds pretty cool. It sounds like when you're watching an old movie and uh, there's like a news scrum or something and everybody's taking pictures outside the courtroom. Uh, you've got continuous high which is exactly what you think it would be. You just hold the shutter down. Oh. It's pretty fast and then continuous low. Um, it's pretty cool. It works really really well. This thing takes eight AA batteries so it's very heavy. You can use this for self-defense as well as a paperweight and I keep forgetting that you can turn this thing on to tone or to not tone. So I'm going to turn the tone off. There, now it shouldn't beep anymore. It's just like a exposure warning. The grip on it is very nice. It's nice to hold. It's got an automatic rewind feature, which I couldn't get to work, but that's probably just my copy. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take this off. There's just this uh, threaded piece here on the front and on the back that screws into the tripod socket nice and easy and it's off uh, it's got contacts here to communicate with the camera this is the little sprocket that advances the film uh, and winds the film and that's it that's the uh, motor drive so let's talk about this camera this camera was the top of the line Minolta manual focus SLR like this was the best that they ever made manual focus wise it's got a fully automatic program mode. You can shoot an aperture priority. You can shoot fully manual. It's got a uh, pretty nice focusing screen. It's not like a split prism or anything, but it's got a little bit of a, a, little bit of a split uh, circle in the middle with a nice ground glass uh, circle around that. Uh, it's a really nice focusing screen. My favorite focusing screen is still my Pentax Program Plus. I find that I nail focus with that one every time. This one's really close to that, but it's a nice big uh, viewfinder, nice and big and bright. You've got uh, shutter speed displayed along the right hand side and your aperture displayed along the bottom. And that's just through a little window under the prism here that actually looks at the aperture number on the lens and just shows it to you through the viewfinder. The body is 
I think mostly plastic, but it does have a nice weight to it, especially with this 50 millimeter f1.4 lens on it. Uh, it's got a hot shoe, it's got exposure compensation dial, shutter speed and mode dial. Um, it's got a self timer here that you just flick this up and you crank the shutter and then when you take the picture it starts flashing. You can see it there. Uh, it's counting down. I don't know how long it is. I haven't actually timed it. There you go. Boom. Man, it's not the best looking camera in the world, but it's it's not the ugliest either. It's more utilitarian uh, than a work of art like something like a, a Leica or a Spotmatic or something like that, which is more sort of design oriented. Eh, maybe not a Spotmatic. I think they're beautiful, but that's just me. But I mean, it's not a bad looking camera. It's all black, which I really like. It's more sort of conspicuous when you're doing street photography. I do have a bit of a light leak in this camera though, and it showed up in a couple of my color photos. Uh, I believe the source is right along this edge of the film door. This light seal is kind of crumbling away, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of work on that, which is fine. Shutter is uh, a cloth shutter, so uh, there was definitely some cost savings there. Holy crap, I've been trying to show you guys how the shutter works and I had it on self timer and couldn't figure out why I wasn't taking a picture. So now, there you go, cloth shutter, boom. Uh, maybe I should slow that down so you can actually see it. Let's make it, I don't know, half a second or something here. Cock the shutter and there you go. It's got a nice little uh, film holder on the back so you can put a piece of your uh, the lid of your film box in there to remind you what film you're shooting. I always like that. Some people don't. I don't know. I think it's good. I really like this camera. It's If you want to get into shooting film, these are the kind of cameras you want to look for. Something that you can manually focus that's got like a full program mode, automatic exposure mode, and then move yourself into aperture priority so you can understand depth of field and you can understand how different apertures affect your shutter speeds. Uh, and then maybe from there, move into shooting in full manual. Um, just quickly on this lens, uh, this lens is excellent. It's f1.4, so it's very fast, very sharp. Minolta makes some fantastic lenses, and this one is no exception. If you're a vintage lens collector, my chihuahuas are barking upstairs, it's driving me insane. I love them to death though. If you're a vintage lens collector, this is definitely one to look for. I also have a Rokor MC, it's so MC or MD, it's with my SRT-102, another Minolta film SLR that will work on this camera, but I wanted to shoot it with what it came with originally. This is how it was sold and with the motor drive. I also looked up uh, in, in high speed mode, this thing shoots 3.5 frames per second, which that's pretty good. It's a film camera, it's gotta wind the film. Like you think about modern cameras, like my X-T20 shoots what is it like 11 frames per second or nine frames per second or something i don't look this stuff up before i start talking to you guys but 3.5 frames per second in the 80s was really good and this camera is fantastic and i think that if you want to get into film photography like i said this is a great place to start and uh it's highly highly recommended like i said in my last video i really appreciate all the feedback I'm getting and all the new subscribers that are coming to this channel. I enjoy interacting with every single one of you. I try to reply to everybody. Thank you for asking me the questions you're asking. They're all great questions and if I can help you with your photography or a camera choice or something, I'm totally down to do that. So feel free to drop something in the comments if anything you wanna know and uh, I will try my best to answer it for you. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.